I wanted to do a video to show you how I'm going to do all of the Calico Garden star blocks. That's these border blocks right here. I will link to Lori Holt's blog post on these. They are on her blog. And it's important that you check her blog each week to see how everything is going to be stitched and done. The way she's doing these star blocks is she starting up here in the top with the green one and counting like this. So this is block one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we've got some applique blocks and then like here's 10. So she goes all the way through the whole quilt like this. And then number 23 is this one right here. These blocks are pieced. And the only way to know how to piece them is by reading the post on her blog. And she goes step by step with pictures to tell you how to cut and how to piece the blocks together. There are two different fabrics that make up the circle centers of each one of these blocks. There's this one that has a little bit of a white print on it. And then there's this one that's a darker brown. There are 16 of these pieces of fabric. There are seven of these circles. These are all 06 and they're all the exact same size, the centers, but it's just two different fabrics that they're made from. So I'm going to go through how I cut all of the circle centers and then I'm going to go through how I am going to center them on the blocks, get it digitized and get them sewn on to the center of the blocks. I want to show you how I'm going to keep all of the Calico Star Blocks sorted and separated and what I'm going to do. So I did a control F find on the uh, PDF document, the sewing guide, and I went through there and I wrote down, I just did a search for star and everywhere it said Calico Star Block, I wrote down like there's four, two by three and a half, star block 19 or four, two by twos in star block 19. And so I'm going to iron these and go ahead and cut them. And just like I did in the chicken salad quilt when I was sorting out all of the blocks, I'm going to do a paper plate and I'm going to label it with a sticky number for each number of the star block. But that way each paper plate will have all of the pieces and I'll just stack the paper plates and I'll just sew them up one at a time. All right, I have spent the last two days cutting out all of the pieces for the Calico Star Blocks in Calico Garden. And I'm using the old paper plate method that I used in, what was it, the chicken salad quilt from Lori Holt last year. I got this idea from my friend Lisa. Uh, she used to use it with puzzle pieces, you know, putting pieces of I guess groups of pieces on a plate and moving them around or whatever. But this is just such a simple way to do this. So each plate has a, a sticky on it and this is like number one, okay? So I went through each fabric. So I did the control F and I think I mentioned this in another piece a little bit earlier of a video. I'll have to go through. Y'all, I've done these a couple of days apart and it's hard to remember what I did. So I went through, I did a control F on the PDF document and looked for the word star. And everywhere it came up with Calico Star Block and it said what to cut for that. I went ahead and wrote that down on a little note. I went through that and I wrote down on a sticky and then I pinned it to that fabric. Then I spent two days cutting out all of the fabrics and whatever plate it went on, because I've got 23 plates for all 23 Calico Star Blocks. Now all of my plates have all the pieces cut, every one of them. And so I've got all my 23 plates here. I went through this this morning, plate number eight, since tomorrow is Valentine's Day, happy Valentine's Day. I went ahead and did a little pink and red one and it turned out super cute. These blocks finish at eight and a half square. So center is four and a quarter. I'm gonna take a pencil and a ruler and I'm just gonna mark, let me bring the camera down and show you. So I'm just gonna mark in 
four and a quarter from the edge and make a mark with pencil like this and then four and a quarter in from this edge and mark center okay and then I've got a dime target sticker and on the block it doesn't matter which way you know it is because it's identical all the way around but I am going to go ahead and put this on the marks so that it's exactly in the center like that and now I'm gonna hoop this on some no-show poly mesh and get it ready to go into the embroidery machine so that I can stitch down the circle that's gonna go in the center of that and the two fabrics are this one right here and this is directional so you may want to pay attention to how you put this fabric this is the fat quarter of it I've got the half yard that came with it in the kit and then uh, this one is the other darker brown so I need 16 of these out of this fabric and seven it's the letter 06 from the simple shapes for this quilt. I need to go into Brother Canvas now and I need to make 23 circles for the 06 and get those cut out. And this is a perfect time to use my 24 inch mat. So work smarter, not harder, right? Now, if you don't have a 24 inch mat and you've only got the 12 inch mat, you're just gonna have to do a couple of different runs of the mat through the machine to get all of your circles cut out. So let's get that done right now, okay? I am here at Canvas Workspace at brother.com and I've already logged in and I'm just gonna go to my projects. And I need to pull up the 06, and that's going to be on this one right here. See, I, I titled these with the number that the pieces were that I scanned in. So if you're brand new to this process, I'll put a link to a video right up here. You can take a look at that series of videos to see exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to uh, click this button right here. It says edit this project and I need number six. So I took a black Crayola marker and I just traced around the outside of all of the simple shapes for this quilt. This does not increase the size of the simple shape at all. In fact, you're supposed to trace around the simple shape on the interfacing the way Lori Holt does her applique. This is the exact same process. You're just tracing around the simple shape and you're doing it on printer paper and then scanning the printer paper into the Brother Scan and Cut and saving it in the Brother Canvas. So I need number six. I'm going to pull this one off the mat. The rest of these, I'm just going to highlight them all and hit delete on my keyboard. Okay, so I'm going to move this back onto the mat and I'm going to come up here to the project tab. I'm going to click that and it says area size. I'm going to go to the 12 by 24 because I've got a 24 inch mat. There we go. Look at that. I need 16 of these circles and I want to start at the bottom for the cutting and work my way up. So I'm just going to bring this down here and I'm just going to right click and duplicate. I'll move it, right click, duplicate so I can get three across. I'm going to continue to do that until I get, uh, I actually need a total of 23 of these, 16 of one fabric and seven of another. Okay, so there's all 16. Y'all, this, uh, this is definitely the best thing in the world to just be able to trace one shape and repeat it and digitize it and make it work for you this way. This is fabulous. Okay, so I am all finished with this. I'm going to come up here to the top and rename this and I'm going to call it capital O dash six and 16. So I know that there's 16 of those and I'm going to hit download and it's got the FCM file right there. 
So I don't need to download 16 of these as an FCM file. I only need one. So I'm not going to download this one to PC right now. I'm just going to do the scan and cut transfer right now. Okay, that one's ready. Now I'm going to put some heat and bond light on the back of my fabric, and then I'm going to get my fabric on the mat. I just need these seven right up here. So I'm going to scroll down and get rid of these nine. Highlight those, hit delete. And I think that I can do this on my 12 inch mat. I'm going to move all these up just like that. I'm going to go project and 12 by 12. There we go. That works. And I'm going to call it 06 7 and download. And I'm going to download to scan and cut. I need to put some heat and bond light on the back of that other fabric and then get it on the mat. I have my other fabric on my 12 inch. This is my low tack mat. I did tape it down around the edges just to be sure. I'm going to go back to home and OK to delete all patterns. I'm going to tell it OK. I'm going to go back into my wrench and change it back on the cut area to the 12 by 12 and tell it OK and OK and retrieve data from the cloud. And there's my seven circles. I know that it's going to cut fine because the entire mat is covered with fabric. So I'm just going to tell it OK and select and cut. Oh, I need to load the mat and start. <laughs> Awesome. Perfect. I don't even really need this. These are coming right up. Oh, this is awesome. Okay. So all of my center circles now are cut and we are ready to digitize that shape and I'll show you how I'm going to stitch it on to that number eight block. Since I'm only going to stitch one circle at a time on each block, I only need one of these circles. So I'm going to highlight all of these and hit delete and then I just need the one and that's it. I'm not messing with the size because I have already cut out all my pieces. I'm going to just change this title to 06 and I'm going to download and you can see it says 0-6 FCM and I'm going to download to PC. And then there it is in my downloads file. I'm going to close this and I'm going to open BES. Now that I'm in BES, I'm going to come up here to the B and I'm going to import FCM. There's my 06 and open. This is very simple and straightforward. So I'm just going to go to tools and convert to applique. I don't want it to be a satin stitch. I want a blanket stitch. So I'm going to change satin to blanket and click apply. Perfect. That looks great. That's it. And as you can see on here, I'm going to click on this. Now it's applique. We have the placement line, the tack down, and the blanket stitch. I don't need to tack it down because I'm going to tack it down using the iron to iron the piece on to the square. Now I'd like to get rid of this and I can hit delete on my keyboard, but that doesn't work. And if I right click, there's no way for me to get rid of that stitch. So what I am going to do is actually open this in Embrilliance. In Embrilliance, I can delete the stitch. You don't have to do that. If you don't have Embrilliance, you can just skip over this stitch on your embroidery machine if you want. But I'm going to file 
uh, save as and I'm going to skip over the working file. I don't really need that. This is such a simple design. I'm just going to save it as a brother embroidery design and I'm going to call it O-6 and save. I'm going to open this in Embrilliance and I want to show you if you have Embrilliance Stitch Artist 2, you can Come up here to the Stitch Artist icon and click that. And over here, we've got a button that says Vector. I click it and I'm gonna, uh, let's see, go to my downloads and 06 and it'll open that vector. And all you have to do is click it and there is a blanket stitch right here and just click that for applique. And that's it. It's all done. You only get the placement line and the final blanket stitch, and that's it. It doesn't give you the tack down. So I'm going to go to Utility and send to Solaris XP1. XP1 is the Luminaire, and I'm going to call it O-6. It'll rename it in the machine when it goes over there. So I'm going to tell it OK. It's going to throw an error message just like that, but it did go over to that machine. So I'm just going to tell it OK. Now, all right, I have got my hoop for the multi needle hooped with uh, some no show poly mesh. And I'm using my dime hoop mat that I absolutely love to find center on this. And if you remember, I had put a sticker already on center of my block. I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. I don't need it to be exact, but I am going to eyeball it because I've already got my center figured out here. I'm going to use my Sew Tights magnets. I'm just going to take the base of it and put it kind of like right there. And let me show you how I do this. So kind of aligning it here and here and then I'm just going to place that over it like that and then I can put the top just like that okay I'm going to put some KK2000 from Sulky just hold this down kind of smooth it Perfect. And do the same thing again right here. Put the base, the bottom of the so tight right there. And then just kind of set that on top of it. And then once you've got your so tights on there, if you want, you can move them around on the back and get them as far away from the design as you want. All right, that looks really good. So now I am going to stitch out that circle and get it ironed on. Okay, I sent the design over wirelessly, so I'm going to touch the wireless button. This is the Brother PR1055 uh, 10 needle, and it's the last one I sent over, which is this one. And I'm going to tell it set. Now I want to scan the hoop. So I'm going to touch the camera button right here and I'm going to take a picture of the hoop and I'm going to tell it okay. Very good. Now we can see that design on there. So I'm going to tell it edit end and I need to assign a thread color. The thread I want is on spool number three. So I'm going to tell it OK. Oh, I messed up. So that one is the placement line. That's spool number three. And then that is the final blanket stitch. And that is spool number three. But before it stitches that, I need to tell it to stop so I can iron on the circle. So I'm going to tell it OK. Man, I was messing up with that. In order to get up really close to see and make sure that that is exactly where you want it to be, there is a magnifying glass with a plus in it. You can touch that. Tell it OK. Now, you can see the crosshair on the screen. 
and you've got some rotation buttons that I'm not going to use right now but you've got these are some jog buttons where you can go to center and move it all around now this is how much space is covered on the move so right now three arrows that's a whole lot I want it to be a lot less so I'm going to touch the two arrows and now I'm going to move it over and it kind of jumps a little bit after you move it and one more time that's really close and now I need to bring it down just a little bit oh that looks pretty close to perfect I like that I'm gonna tell it okay I love this machine and we are ready to go so I'm gonna remove the target sticker from the block here and I'm gonna to touch embroidery and lock and go the hoop put it on my ironing pad here and just remember this particular fabric is directional so if that matters to you then just kind of pay attention to make sure that you get it straight this is my Cricut mini press I love this for applique put the hoop back in Right and all finished. Let's take a look. Oh, it looks amazing! Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, you guys, one down, 22 to go. But this is exactly how I am going to finish up the rest of these Calico Star Blocks for the quilt. And I'm gonna make like one a day or so until they're all done. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Helps the channel a lot. We will talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye.